Hello. I've just started looking at the um, spindles. Now, anybody that knows anything about anything will know that I've got that bolt in from the wrong side. Okay, let's just give a bit of the backstory. This is a 32 spindle, left hand drive, American. This kingpin, I believe, is a Ford Pilot, English. And it's, it's of this type that takes the bearing above, but um, it doesn't have all the brake gubbing around the top. And it appears to have a grease nipple fit in there. And it's got a couple of holes at the bottom to enable that bottom bearing to be greased fr from there. Uh, I don't know why. Because you can grease this from a grease fitting on the front there. But what this is telling me is that somehow I've managed to turn the axle around the other way. Because this bolt... This bolt goes in from the back but won't go in from the front but never fear there isn't a front and rear to these axles they're the same but what it is there's just some probably some crud I've just done the other side this is a 9 16 drill It's brand new. So I'm just going to use this old fashioned British adjustable spanner to grip that. I'm going to just turn it through there like that by hand. Yeah, it's pushing a big wad of crud out. Just gone straight through, look, and took that with it, that big wad of crap. Okay, so just give it a bit of a turn, like that. Hopefully now this should go in, yeah, that goes in from that end, look. Uh, this isn't tapered this diameter so it should just go in from one end or the other the hole is 9 sixteenths all the way through so now I'm kind of just doing a test fit I'm more familiar with the um, 37 type spindles but these do appear to be the correct type for this so now that goes like that and the nut goes on there now some kingpin sets um, don't have the correct sort of nut this is the correct type because you need this and you need a washer I hope the lights are okay because I'm having a problem with my light hang on I'm just going to get a spanner brittle made in England this is only just a rough trial fit So that's just nipped up. This has got play in it. It's going to need new bushings. So that's how it looks. Now that appears to be just touching there. And I, I could see marks on the axle where it has touched. So that's not very good really.
it might be that if the kingpin bushes were okay, it wouldn't touch there. But that's not bad. There's only a very small gap there, which you, there's only a very small gap there, which you can put shims in, and you put like a felt seal in there, like a felt washer in there, just to stop uh, you know any moisture getting into the bottom bearing. The bottom bearings open at the bottom anyway. So I just thought I'd show you that that the axle there isn't a front and rear, and that. If you can't put the bolt in, you need to just run a drill through it, 11 16 or a reamer. But there's, there's one other thing that's of interest to me as an engineer, and that is, can you see that the, the arm shoots forward, like that, in the straight ahead position? That spindle is in the straight ahead, and the arm goes forward, like that. That's because the drag link is coming out at an angle like that. So that puts that at 90 degrees to the drag link when the drag link is fitted. That's, you know, you, you want, when you're in the straight ahead, you want 90 degrees there. And you also, ideally, you want 90 degrees at this end as well. So you're at the middle of the arc, in effect. Okay, that looks all right. I'm going to use these pins. I can't. I bought them from somebody. I can't, I can't remember now. It was a long time ago. But that looks okay. I'll put new bushes in. And um, get it all set up. Yeah, that, that's fouling on that axle. Just fouling. Just touching. What you can do is put another washer on that will spice the nut out a tiny bit. I'll just show you that as an example. Let's just do that just for the sake of a demonstration. It might be that there's some other nuts that are a bit longer than that. I've just took this at random from a, a set. I've just got a washer there So you can kind of fine tune your steering lock. It's important if, um, for instance, you've got split split uh, wishbones and your tyre is hitting, and you can adjust this to um, limit. Now that is just clear. Now that is just clear. What I what I would probably do is maybe build this up with weld and then turn it or look to see if I've got a longer nut. I've got some nuts I've saved off other things. There might be a longer nut somewhere. But anyway, that, that's the way it all works. So I'll clean the bolt holes, just set it up temporarily so I can sort of see what's going on and see what needs to be done. All the time I'm looking to see, well, what is my next job? And it, I think the, my next job is going to be put the steering box on, try the drag link, try that, look for the parts. Yeah, what's this? It's the drag link. I just found it live and direct. So I think that's the drag link. Now I'm assuming I'm assuming that the um, grease fittings go to the back like that. I'll check the threads before winding it on. There we go. That's that's how that works. Cool. I'm turning this spindle and then watching the whole mechanism move back and forth. And that, that track rod looks looks got a bend in it, so I need to straighten that. We call them track rods in England. You call them tie rods now, you're in America. We call them track rods. 
we call it setting the tracking, you know, when you're setting the toe in. Can you see that this has got um, a, uh, it's actually a valve seat insert on there, that's a spicer, part of a kit for putting the lighter brakes on. All these parts I need to make sure I've got. Ah, because there isn't one on that side, so I don't know where that is. That's a pain, isn't it? Okay. But you know, at the end of the day, I, I have got a lathe, so I could make that piece if need be. Okay, that's looking good. And you can see there that the drag link on this car was rubbing. I think that drag link wasn't the one off this car. The one that was on it was really badly bent. I love things like this. I just I play with them all day. Okay, that's looking feasible, isn't it? Looking feasible. I thought what I would do is have a look at the way the steering sits. There's my drag link. You can see this has actually never been removed. There's the original 32 Pitman arm. Still got clag all over it. So I'm going to clean this all up, inspect the ball, inspect these parts, clean this all up. I'll probably actually just fit it in place first just to check that everything's going to work but I think it should because I have had it mocked up once before this is the steering box this is the steering box it's an F1 I did have a look inside and it's quite nice inside can you see the plate is modified there that's modified to suit this this has been fitted before so I'm just going to put it in place Now, on a 32, the three holes are arranged with one hole at the top. On a 33, 34, the two holes are at the top and one hole's at the bottom. Now, what's important is, you see that, that hole there is very close to that edge of that frame there. What's very important is that you have a radius there, on that corner there, so you're not fighting with that corner. Okay, the battery went then, I'm not sure when, so what I just did, uh, I, I just scraped all the splines out of there. And um, what I've just done is wound it so it's kind of where roughly, what I think, in the straight ahead. And there are two, um, what you call, like, um, dead splines there. There's like a gap in the splines there. And basically they are like the four cor corners of a square. There's like one there, one there, one there, and one there. And when you look on this, you can see the dead areas are in that relationship. So that is sticking straight down. So that should go on there like that. There, roughly, you know. There you go. Okay. Good. So there's a nut and a thing, spring washer. That is, um, if it's the same as the other ones I've got, it's a 1 and 7 sixteenths. So it's worth keeping your eyes open. I bought a, a second hand socket on eBay. Yeah, relatively cheap. It's a funny size that nobody wants. So that's that. And this needs a stud. 
Come in here. So that goes in there quite nice. There you go. Obviously there's no grease on that so I won't do it too tight. So there we have the whole steering mechanism in place. That's going to the right and that's going to the left. There you go, there's the mechanism of the steering. Okay, to the left to the right. That's all there is to it. Can you see on the drag link that on this end like the distance from the ball to the end is short. That's because there's a big spring here. On this one the distance from the ball to the end it's quite long relatively that's because there isn't a spring here the spring is here that's so that if there's a shock to the steering let's say there's a shock to the steering on this side which which tries to pull the ball that way this spring will give and if there's a shock that tries to push it that way like that then that spring will give so there's like um, s safety overload spring, if you like, in both directions. So there's not really a lot to the steering, is there? You've just got to make sure all the joints are all in good condition. Get all the balls, you know, make sure all the balls are nice and clean. Make sure the kingpins are good. Bushings are good. I've got a reamer for the for the bushings. I know the steering box is okay because I've had it apart and had a look at it. Nice, I like it. Okay, good. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it might be just slightly towed out. I just tried to turn the rod. There's a left hand thread one end and a right hand thread the other, so you turn the rod to adjust the length. You can't adjust the drag link. The drag link is non adjustable. That's why it's important that you have the right one because, for instance, if you fitted a th 37 spindles with a um, one of them wishbone, what they call slingshot steering arm, it's central so your drag link is like an inch too long. But this is what I was saying about that trying to maintain the 90 degrees. You've got 90 degrees there and when you look from above you've got 90 degrees there, okay within a degree or two but that's the whole idea. When you fit one of them other ones it kind of puts it so your steering box isn't on the sweet spot when you're at the straight ahead. There's a sweet spot on the steering where all the adjustment is adjusted out, where all the free play is adjusted out, and you want you want the straight ahead on the sweet spot. And obviously the Ford engineers did their homework to come up with that length. Piece of cake in it putting these cars together. Okay, thanks for joining me in the shop. Just a quickie. Um, I, just want, I was just curious to come out and make sure all these pieces fitted together. Okay, thanks a lot then. Hello, this is my very, very, very messy workbench. I simply, I don't know what it is. It's in my psyche, I just can't get around to tidying up. Okay, I'm part, part way through stripping down this thing. Uh, just to explain a couple of things what I did, I um, doused it with ATF acetone mix 
And what I found was that with this in place, you, I couldn't put this uh, splitter on. So what I did, I undid the plug in the end. So I thought I'd just see if this um, see if this splitter would work on here. Okay. I'll pick this up at a car boot. So, well, an auto jumble actually. It's just gone. That's nice. Cool. Yep, that's gone. So that's gone. There's my oops, remnants of the seal. The ball is a bit worn. Yeah, a bit worn. A bit football shape. But I've got some replacements of these which I can use. So that's good. So that goes in the tub. This goes in the tub. These are just going to get put in the in the parts washer. I've got to prise this out of here. This this can be clean now. I'll give it a scrape. Get that dirt off it. And I just want to clean this up as well. Get this out of here. There's the thin little seat. So there we go. And from what I was able to tell, this is the this bit with the piece on the end there, where the spring goes on the end, is the steering arm end at the front. And that bit with the short end, where you just put the cap in and the spring goes here, that's the pitman arm end. That's where I've got all this fluid on from freeing it off. Okay, so they could all be cleaned up now. Alright, I'll bring you back when there's more to show. Right, I've um, cleaned the drag link. That's just been wiped over with, just wiped off and then wiped over with the ATF acetone. And you can actually see there's still some remnants of black paint on there which I believe would have been the original black paint. And here's the um, Pitman arm. There's a couple. First of all, who would have thought that that would have had all that paint on it as well? You saw how crusty it was. I showed you it. I showed you how crusty it was. I haven't gone mad with it because I haven't wire brushed it, you see. But that's still got black paint on it. But there's a couple of things of interest the first of all is, I've put that flat down on the bench. Can you see that the end isn't? Can you see that the end isn't straight? It's got a twist on it. That's so that when it's on here, it shoots the arm out towards the spindle over there. That wouldn't suit a um, right-hand drive car. It'd be pointing the wrong way. So that's left-hand drive 32. The other thing that makes it 32 is that it's got a replaceable, it's got the replaceable ball. The 33-34 has a, a ball built in. The other thing is that, can you see there by my thumb there's a little indentation? That's from the Ford factory, that's like a hardness testing mark. So it shows that they, you know, were very particular about the materials, you know, and they they had to be, you know, come out to the right hardness. Otherwise, they, you know, they, they might be too brittle. The other thing that I noticed, but you probably can't see it, is that the, the clocking isn't um, equal. Those dead splines there, can you see them against the daylight there? The dead splines, they aren't equally clocked to the um, 
thing. This one is a bit lower than that one, for instance. Just, you know, when you start looking at these little details, when you find something at a swap meet and you pick it up, you think, oh, what the hell's that? Well, you know, there's a lot of little details there that you can look for. So that's the first couple of things that I've cleaned up, and they've come out okay, I think. Okay, and there, there's the rest of the stuff. I mean, I didn't go mad with it. I just left it in long enough to kind of loosen the worst of it, and I can clean them up now. I'm going to see if I can um, tidy this up a little bit. Maybe just kind of put it in the lathe and skim this front corner off here. Tidy that area there. You can see where it's all been nudged up. Somebody's been chiselling it, haven't they? I'll, show, I'll bring you back and show you what it looks like in a minute. There's the nut. About to... Um, thin it down quite a bit. It was hard to hold it, you know, because I was holding it really close like that. But, you know, at least it hasn't got all them rough bits on it. I can't see my socket right now, but this is inch and a half. That's relatively close. So that's got ply look at, at that end of the travel. Possibly a tiny bit there. I haven't really done it up very tight. So that's looking good, isn't it? Looking okay. Let's give it a wipe with this stuff. There we are. That'll age down nicely now. I'll probably have to take it off to give this a good clean up, but yeah, it kind of looks okay. If I can find a better nut, I'll use it. Bit by bit, bit by bit. This scene of devastation is a result of me basically assembling up the drag link and the track rod. They're all assembled up and rough fitted because I need to take them off again uh, to do the kingpins. So I haven't put the dust seals on, but they are connected. I've replaced three, three of the four balls. I kept one of the old balls in there. I've replaced three of the balls. And I've used all the original seats and sockets. There was one that was badly worn, but I just used that here. To, this piece here was badly worn. And I used that just to load the spring. The seat there is okay. And the one that was here, that all it had done was push the spring, so it wasn't worn, I used on that end there. By mixing and matching all the parts and with new balls, I've got a workable setup. There's the track rod in place. That's the area where it was welded there. And... Um, you know, it's looking okay. The other thing I did was um, on the the one end, I made a little bung and I inserted that in the end. That so that when you're putting the grease in the in the in the grease fit in there, it goes into the ball instead of going along the tube. That steering wheel, by the way, is Hudson. Anyway, so there's the all the steering in place, and it steers. like that so there you are I think it looks good I think it's looking okay you know looking serviceable yet not like it looks like it's been over restored and when I clean up these spindles and just oil them lightly and clean these up it'll look okay so I suppose the next job is kingpin bush replacement and then kingpins including setting the um, shims 
and the seals there. There you go then, all the front end, at least mocked up, all the parts accounted for, all the parts deemed serviceable, so another job off the list. Today I'm going to try and fit the spindles. I've been doing some preparation work so hopefully it should be a relatively simple job to just put them on. So let's see how it goes. Because this is a left hand drive car this is the right hand spindle, this is the right hand side of the car. So there's the spindle. Now this is the spindle. This kingpin is, I bought this and it was described as for a Ford V8 Pilot which is a British built car. It has um, a grease nipple in the top but I've plugged it off with that NPT plug there. This is a made in USA thrust bearing and this is a washer that I have custom made. This washer is in the region of 80,000 thick. Yeah, 75 plus 5, that's 80,000 thick. Okay. Now, don't read anything into that because the one that I've had to make for the other side has been 36,000. So I'll, sh I'll show you what I did. Put that in there like that. And I put the Put the bolt in. Now, what people have to understand is that on these early Ford, on these early Ford kingpins, pre-37, the weight of the car hangs on the kingpin. Right. So what I did, I assembled that like that. Now, I want to be able to put, put the um, felt seal in there. So what I did, I, I measured that gap up there. I measured that gap with the feeler gauges and I went on the lathe and I made this and that is the right thickness to go in there. So, So I'm going to try, try and assemble it now for keeps. And what you have to bear in mind is that I'm not, I've done it once or twice before, Brown. As I say, I'm not doing this all day, every day. So what I'm doing, I'm getting a, this spare kingpin, putting that on, on there like that. Because I need it to be in line when I offer it up. So I'm going to offer this into here. I'm pulling that kingpin back. Because not, there's not a lot of spare room, you see. That's why, that's why I wanted to put the spacer above. Right, so here's my washer. And here's my kingpin. I'm going to put that underneath the bearing mainly because there's quite a radius on there and it, it gets caught on the washer. I'm just going to go in clean with these and I'm not going to grease it up. Okay, that's good because that has gone through that. That's gone through that felt seal. It might have been difficult if I hadn't got it lined up. And I have got it the right way around. I didn't do that there's, a, there's two flats on the top of here that shows you when it's lined up. Okay, now that's gone in now. 
Now, what I found was that moves quite nicely. What I found on the other side was the washer that I'd made was too thick, and as I tapped, as I tapped that in, it locked up. That's nice. I can't hardly feel any play on that. So that's what I'd call good. And you've got to bear in mind the weight of the cars on this, so it actually feels better when you pull it up because you're stopping these surfaces rubbing here. I did nothing to the spindles except clean them up, wipe them over, and um, I put new grease nipples in there. These are a eighth NPT thread. So that's done. So I'm just going to go and repeat that on the other side now. Now on the other side, the washer needed to be around about just under 40 thou. And the washer that I made came out at 38 thou and, and it fits just nice. So let's do the other side. Okay. Here's my spindle. There's, there's the new grease nipples. So, the washer that I need needs to be 38,000. Yeah, that's 25 plus 12, that's 37,000, that one. And I think it's in the machining of these, the position of the slot. But it's, it was good on the lathe to be able to make these because I finally got the hang of using my parting off tool and these were done by parting off a piece of tube. This one's been fitted before, it's already pre-compressed. I have assembled these up, so, you know, and I've took them off to show, to show the assembly. Okay, that's, that's lined up there. So, here's my new kingpin. The notch is that way. I'm pushing the other one out there. There you go. Sweet. Here's a, a nice used locking bolt. Just tapped it in gently then. It wasn't quite... That's, that's nice. That's good. As I pull it up it goes a little bit freer. So that's, that's nicely fitted in there now. I'm trying to work out which nuts to use. I think I'll use this dark, these darker ones. I do need to put an extra washer on here though. I think I do. But I'll just do it like this for now. Yeah, that, that's touching there. So I've got two washers plus a spring washer. That's against there, and I don't know if I can get the camera just the right angle, but it is possible to see. It is possible to see daylight down between the spindle and the axle. 
and that feels nice and free. Let's try this one with one washer. Yeah, there's tons of clearance there, look. I wonder if that steering arm's a bit bent. Maybe it needs bending down a bit. Yeah, I could do that. I've got my oxyacetylene. Let's try this with um, just the one washer. I like to just make sure everything's just right. Yeah, there's tons of room there, look, that's okay. So that's your steering and stop there. There's the drag link. I need to tighten these up a little bit, these bits here. I assembled these up a couple of nights ago. I wanted to just do it nice and quiet without having to worry about filming. It feels a bit tight actually. Just need a split pin now that's a little bit longer than that. I'll have to have a look through some of my other boxes. Okay, but that's going in from both ends now, so that is about it. And the the ball is swiveling, still swiveling freely, so Sales on, haven't I? I was going to put the nut on then. What I want to know is which direction is the hole in? Something like that. and it's just about long enough so that, that'll work. Ooh. I was going to say no sharp edges but you know it, it can tighten up. Oh, I need the grease sealing don't I? I'll try it, I'll just try it without first. I've already run a tap through the nuts I'm going to relieve, I'm just going to relieve the back of the nut there a tiny bit because I think there's like a plain bit of thread coming through there. I'm just going to do that in the lathe. Oh. Okay, I reckon that's towing out now, which makes sense because I've pulled the, the both of the balls in, haven't I? So, right. I'll just do this up and then go and do a little job. Right. 
Okay, good. Okay, there you go. Not quite as free moving as it was, but you know, there's a lot more friction now with all them ball joints. And I've got to grease them all up as well, haven't I? Okay, good. Plenty of grease everywhere now. I'll just wind it back and forth a little bit. Let it all kind of bed in. Okay, good. Nice one. Okay, I'm going to call it good at that then. As I keep saying, another little job from the to-do list to the done list. Okay, thanks for popping in then. Catch you next time. Bye.